In this exercise, we'll reason about when the constructor and the destructor for a class type object is called. So here we have a my class class, and its constructor actually takes in a string and we'll store that as a member variable. The constructor will actually print out ctor and then the then the string that was actually passed in. When a my class object dies, its destructor gets invoked, and that actually prints out detour, and then the string that was passed in to the constructor when the object was created. So we want to look at the code on the right and see what happens when the main function runs. I'll pause for a few seconds to give you a chance to pause the video and work this out on your own before we talk about it together. Okay, so we start with main as usual. The first thing that happens in main is that we create a local variable, mPointer. Now this variable itself is not of class type, it's a pointer. This means that it doesn't actually invoke a constructor. And instead what happens is that this pointer gets default initialized to some undefined value. The next thing that we do is we call func. Now that func function, it creates a local variable that's of my class type. So this does invoke the constructor of my class, and the string that we pass in is local in func. So the constructor prints out ctor, and then the string local in func. Proceeding past that, we actually get to the end of the function. When the function returns, all of the local variables die, and if they are of class type, that means that their destructor needs to run. So here we do have the m3 object that's of class type. So its destructor runs, and that prints out detour, and then the string that was passed to the constructor, which was local in func. All right, now execution returns back to main and proceeds past the call to func. And so what that next line does is it creates a dynamic my class object, and it passes in the string dynamic. So this will invoke the constructor, pass the string dynamic to the constructor, which prints out ctor, and then the string itself, which is dynamic. The new operator itself, aside from creating this my class object and invoking its constructor, what, will, what it will do is it will give us back the address of that newly created object. So M pointer will actually be pointing at that new my class object. Moving on to the next line, we create a local variable that's of my class type. So this does invoke a constructor. We pass in the string local in main to that constructor, so we get ctor local in main. On the next line, we invoke the delete operator on m pointer, and what that does is it follows the pointer to the object it's pointing at and then invokes the destructor if it's of class type. And in this case, we get the destructor of that my class object invoked. And so that's going to print out detour and then the string that was passed when creating this, which was the string dynamic. Moving on in main, we have another call to func. And we already know what happens there. We have a local my class object that gets created with the string local in func. So we get ctor local in func. And then when func is returning, that local object, its lifetime dies. So it, it, its lifetime ends. So we have the destructor invoked on that object, and that prints out detour local in func. And then execution returns back to main. We hit the end of main, which will cause the local objects inside of main to be reclaimed for their lifetime to actually end. And they actually get reclaimed in reverse order of construction. So the most recent thing to be constructed was the M4 local object. That's actually of class type, so that will invoke the destructor on that. And so we get detour, and then the string that was passed when creating that was local in main. And then after that, we'll have the M pointer object actually gets reclaimed as well. This is not of class type, so we don't have a destructor invoked. And 
and then the activation record for main goes away.